All right, so let's take a look at how we do questions um, like this one, questions six to 10, which are called um, proofs or sort of analytical questions where we're trying to prove a sequence of statements um, to prove a fact about, about a diagram. And the, one of the tricky parts with these problems is you have to be able to identify a reason of why a given statement is, is allowable or is allowed and, um, and then how those statements kind of work together. So <clears throat> when you see a question like this, the first thing you always wanna do is, I, is carefully take note of what are the given truths or the given statements in the problem. So if we look up here in question six, it says we're given the following items. Angle one is equal to angle two, angle one, <clears throat> and angle one is equal to angle uh, three. So these are given statements that are um, assumed true. Okay, so that means that you have to take these as true statements that will apply to the, to the figures. And then a question here says, prove that BC, and that symbol there is kind of mislabeled. It it's actually should be the parallel line symbol. It means prove that segment BC is parallel to segment EF. So what we want to be able to prove is we want to be able to put a notation on the two lines that indicate that both of those are parallel. So what is the sequence of, um, of reasoning that we can take us through this? So we start by looking at what's given. So they always do like a little two column table here where we have the, the given statement, which is the mathematical statement here. So this is the mathematical um, statement and then we're given a reason and a reason can just be something expressed um, in words that is basically identifying why that mathematical statement is true. So our first line here says angle one equals angle two. So what does that mean? Well we have to look at in, in back into our diagram and we're gonna see okay so we're being told that angle one here equals angle two. Now how do we know that? Um, is there any property in the diagram that actually lets us know that those two angles, those two um, positional angles there are the same? And the only thing we can go is we go back to the question and we're, we see the, the given statement here that says this is true. So this statement is actually a true statement. So the only reason that you have to uh, supply for this is that you say it's a given statement or that it's given because that is already to be defined as a true statement. Okay, and then likewise, question, uh, step number two here says angle one is equal to angle three. Okay, that is also a true statement because that is part of our given assumptions here. So we can just simply pencil in the word given for that. So then the question goes, well, how do we know if, what about statement three? It says here angle two is equal to angle three. Okay, so this is a little bit of a logic kind of um, a problem here. So if you think about the previous two statements, if we know angle one equals angle two, and we know angle one also equals angle three, okay, because they're both equal to angle one, okay, by deduction, okay, or logically angle two and angle three would have to be equal to each other. Okay, so the term that you can, you can use for this is um, angle two equals angle three. We can say that this is um, true by substitution because we're substituting angle one for angle two and angle one for angle three, therefore they're the same. Or you can just say they're both equal to um, angle one. Okay, that would be a a logical reason to explain how you get that. But substitution is kind of the term that's used a lot for this. So therefore, if angle two, go back to our diagram here, if angle one is equal to angle two, and angle two is equal to angle three, okay, so these are, angle two and angle three are corresponding angles because this line segment DE, which I'll just kind of mark here in red, okay, is essentially cutting the two lines, the C and F lines, <clears throat> which means that if those two angles are equal, essentially they're corresponding angles. And the only way corresponding angles are equal when a line cuts 
two other lines like that, like a transversal, it has to mean that <clears throat> those two lines by definition are parallel. So <clears throat> we can state our final statement here is just that BC is parallel to EF by the property of corresponding angles. Okay, so remember there's corresponding, there's alternate interior, um, if those two are equal, because we're looking at the property of the transversal line here, okay, cutting the, um, cutting the two um, parallel lines. Okay, so that would be how you could approach question six, where we're filling in the blanks. Okay, so let's look at question seven. <clears throat> Question seven gives us a set of assumptions here too. So we're told that BE bisects ang angle ABC. So that means this line right here, okay, bisects the two angles. So bisects means um, cut in half, okay, or let's just write that down here. Bisect means divide by two. Okay, so we're gonna divide it into two equal halves. Okay, so that means what you should be thinking at this point is there's angle ABC and the line BE is bisecting that. that is, that's implying that angle one and angle two are gonna be the same because we're just cutting it in half. Okay, and then B, C, and D is bisected by line CE. Okay, so that also means that angle three is equal to angle four. Okay, so that's kind of what we have to be keeping in mind in our head. And then again, we're being told to prove that line AB is parallel to line CD. So we want to be able to prove that we can put um, a couple little arrows on each line here, okay, to indicate that we have two parallel um, line segments. So let's just start and see, work through our statements and see how they, they come up with this. So the first thing says is BE bisects angle ABC. So that's a starter, okay? And that is one of our given true statements. So our reasoning here is that it's just given. Okay, and then angle one equals angle two. And the way we know that is because it's the definition of a bisector. So they kind of have filled that one in for you already. So angle one equals angle two, which is the definition of a bisect. Okay, and then the second one says CE, or the third one, CE bisects angle BCD. Well, that statement is exactly what the given one is. Okay, so that's a given truth. And so we just mark that down as given. So then what else do we know from this point? Okay, well, <clears throat> we could say, if we look at the previous two statements, the bisect um, um, operation produces two angles that are equal. Okay, so if we were uh, looking at the, the logical pattern for this, we could say that angle three is equal to angle four. Okay, and this would be just the property or the, the definition of bisect. Okay, so that means we've split the two angles together. Okay, so now we have a couple of things that we, we can work to here. So it says your angles two plus three is equal to 90 degrees. So that means um, this angle here and this one here, which are different, we assume they're different, angle two and three are equal to 90 degrees. So again, our statements, we have to look carefully. Like there is, it doesn't look like there's any kind of property that jumps out at us, but there is a statement that says two plus three is equal to 90. So that is also a given fact. Okay, so we'll keep going with that. Then we are told here that if we take angle two and double it, and angle three and double it, <clears throat> we get 180 degrees. So that would follow from statement five. So again, they've, we've already filled that in for you. We just called it addition. It's just, we're just adding angles, equaling a certain amount. Um, so that's good. And then question seven says um, angle one plus angle two plus angle three plus angle four is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, and we how do we know that? Well, we've taken angle two and we've turned it into angle one. And then we've taken 
um, one, two, three, and then we've taken the second angle three and we've turned it into angle four. So what rule lets us say that that's possible? Okay, well, we do know that's possible because statements two and statements four are basically telling us that, that if we have angle two, we could replace it with angle one. And if we have angle three, we can replace it with angle four. So the, the reasoning behind this is basically replacement of the angles. So we use this term in the other, the, uh, the other problem there. It's just basically called substitution. Okay, we're substituting um, one angle in for another and creating an equation for that. Okay, so now we have <clears throat> one plus two and three plus four and they equal 180 degrees. So if we go back to our diagram, okay, and we kind of extend our lines here, and then we're, I'll just do this one in red, we have this other line cutting through it. <clears throat> We've essentially got this angle right here that I'm marking in red, plus this angle here that I'm marking in red. Both of those <clears throat> are equal to 180 degrees. Now the only time that that's true is when you have the transversal line cutting to parallel lines. Okay, so this parallel line, this, the green, if the green are parallel and the red is transversal and it cuts that, those two parallel lines, the, the co-interior angles um, add up to 180 degrees. So in order to say that this is truly parallel, um, we would have to say the co-interior angles are 180 degrees and in fact they are because we've managed to, to show that in step 7. So our conclusion or concluding statement is that co-interior um, angles okay, is the property that allows us to say um, segment AB is parallel to CD okay, because the uh, co-interior angles add to 180 degrees. So that would be the, the systematic way to go through that proof where we, we look at each mathematical statement and when we provide a, a reasoning, a logical reason um, to, to, to answer that. Okay, so then, so those are two examples of how you can do that. So then if we look at question eight, okay, I'm not, I won't go through this one, Let leave this one for you to try out, but in question eight, we have a set of given statements. So we're told BC is parallel to EF. So I'm just going to mark that in here. So BC is parallel to EF. So we know when lines cut across parallel lines, we know the properties of certain angles are going to be the same. And we're told also that angle one is equal to angle three. Okay, so we want to... Um, this angle is equal to this angle. So now we need to prove that AB is parallel to DE. So we're trying to prove, I'll just put this in another color here, red, that this segment here, AB, is parallel to this. So what would be the set of steps that we could, we could go through as we try to work through this? Now one of the things that they haven't done here is they haven't given you any starter statements to work through here. So the, the easiest way to tackle this problem, to get going on it, is to just write down your given statements and just basically state those as true. So the first statement I, could, I would just say is that BC is parallel to EF and just write that down as a given statement. Okay, and then <clears throat> we can then start to look at some other, other questions here. So <clears throat> looking at this, now you can do these in, in maybe in a, in a little different order and still sort of get the same answer, but we also know that angle one is equal to angle three. So let's just write that down as a given, okay? Because that's kind of the obvious one. So there, therefore we get started. But what we want to do <clears throat> is prove some things here that are, are parallel. So if lines are, if we want to prove that AB is parallel to DE, then that means this trend, this is going to be a transversal that cuts those two. We have to essentially prove that angle one and angle two would be the same. So what are the steps that we could say that angle two and angle 
angle three would be the same, or angle one and angle two would be the same. Okay, so I'll just kind of maybe leave that for you to see if you can work out the, there's a couple more combinations here that we have to, you have to answer um, in order to get to your final sort of conclusion here of saying that AB is parallel to DE, because that's where we want to go. Okay, so there's a few other statements here that are missing. So the, the hint would be to look at, okay, well, what's been given? Okay, I, I'm, so I'm just going to erase the red parts here because those are the ones that um, <clears throat> we're trying to prove. So I would look at this two here. You have to ask yourself, what is the relationship between um, angle two and angle three? Okay, are they equal? Are they not equal? Okay, how would you know, right? And there, and then how would you look at the relationship between um, if angle two and angle three, what is their relationship? Okay, and then, then you can deduce what the, what the relationship would be between angle one and angle two. Okay, and then that should lead you to a conclusion about whether those two lines are parallel or not, given the, the statements there. So I'll just kind of leave that one a bit open so you can try that. And then question number nine, we'll take a look at how we can start that. Again, um, <clears throat> just start by writing down what are your given statements. So we're going to say AB is parallel to CD, and that's given. Okay, so then I would write down, I would put in a mark here that par segment AB, which it looks like it's this line right here, okay, is parallel to CD, so that's this line right here. So that means these two lines are parallel. That means we have two transversal lines that are cutting them, okay, that have like co-interior angles, alternate interior angles, corresponding angles, okay, that sort of pattern. And then we also know that angle one is equal to angle two, so that's also a given. Okay, so then I, it's a good idea to just mark those in, that this, these two are the same. So you can just put them at the same tick mark. Okay, and then we want to go down to our, eventually a statement that proves that um, segment AC is parallel to segment, oh sorry, segment AC is equal to segment AB. So it's the length, sorry, it's not parallel here, it's the length of the line segment are equal. So we want to show that essentially what we're trying to mark is we're saying that these two lines, this AC is equal to this one here. So we're, we're, since what we're trying to prove is that we have an isosceles triangle, okay, which is the thing that you're trying to, to keep in mind here. So you're wanting to prove that um, there is an isosceles triangle in this diagram. Okay, and so what do you know about isosceles triangles? Well, you, you know that their base angles are equal. Okay, so base angles um, are equal. So in this diagram, angle one and angle three would be our base angles. So we would have to come to the conclusion somehow that angles one and angle three are equal, and then that proves that the other two sides of that triangle would be um, would be the same. Okay, so there's a few couple steps in there that can lead you to that. Um, just put those these ones back in here. Okay, so that you want to be able to show that angle one and angle three are somehow equal, and then that would be the step just before stating that those two line segments would be equal. Okay, so that is a way you can start that one and then start, let's look at question 10. Um, again, we have our given statements here. So we have a uh, statement AB is parallel to CD, so that's given. And then we also have angle one is equal to angle four, okay, and that's also a given. Um, so if we mark those in, it's almost the same picture as before, CD and AB, but we're saying that this one, angle one, is equal to angle four. Okay, and then you ultimately want to prove that angle one is equal to angle two somehow. So <clears throat> we are looking to, to figure out um, 
how, how we can do that. So we know we have two parallel lines. We know we have a couple of lines here that cut across, which are transversals. Um, and we would just and we have some numbered angles so we just need to kind of go from there all right so you'll have to look at some properties of uh, the transversal and the parallel lines and then see if we can fill in the missing statements there so that should give you a start in how to do these questions um, like i say they're a little bit like logic puzzles because you're using definitions of parallel lines and transversals to kind of figure out where where angles are equal and then how you can substitute in things that are equal to prove sort of a, a final statement. Um, so see, give those a try and then see where you, you go with those. And um, then you can, uh, if you still have trouble, you can uh, um, let me know and then we can uh, provide a little bit more detail on some of the questions.